You never forget the first time it happens. It was uh, an overcast Saturday during the spring, May 14th, 2003, uh, to be precise. And my neighbor's son was having a birthday party next door. You know, it wasn't quite raining, but it was gloomy outside. And uh, all the kids had finished opening presents and started throwing balloons at each other. And that quickly escalated into who could pop the other kid's balloon first, you know. And I think it uh, probably only took until the third or fourth pop that I experienced my first hands-free climax. You know, I've always said I didn't choose this life. Balloons chose me. Whether it's the delicate embrace of air-stretched latex or the high-pitched squeal of escaping air, nothing, nothing compares to the feeling it gives me. Sure, it was hard for my wife at first, but after the eighth or ninth time she walked in on me, she, she began to accept me and everything that goes along with me. My name is Leon Lush, and uh, <laughs> I like to f balloons. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new freeze-dried raccoon pelt. My name is Leon Lush and my loins are tingling over your decision to spend a small part of your day here with me right now. You know, here on the Leon Lush channel, we like to perpetually refine our palate. And one of the ways that we like to do that is by embracing all walks of life from all over the world and spend just a few minutes in their shoes the beauty of online content consumption. Meet Chris. <laughs> Chris likes to nut to the sound of balloons popping. That was awesome. Oh yeah, I'm shaking, dude, definitely. So I urge you, come along with me as we spend just a few minutes here in the shoes of a lunar. This is one of my favorite colors. It's um, orange. It's transparent. Pretty much you can see through the balloon while it's getting inflated. This is going to be epic. <laughs> As it's getting bigger, I get a little anxious, a little nervous. You know what? This is epic. He was not wrong. You know, get really excited. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, I'm shaking, dude, definitely. Oh yeah, so I'm shaking, too, definitely. <laughs> this is awesome. It's like a drug almost for for Chris. You know, the, the anticipation of the buildup of blowing it and blowing it and blowing it until it gets so tight it's just about to pop and you don't know when it's going to pop and all of a sudden... And then, that sweet release. I guess pretty much all balloons deserve to die, right? Morbid. My name is Christopher. I was born and raised in Rutland, Vermont. I've lived here for 25 years. I don't think there's a day that goes by where I am not playing with a balloon or having some type of fun with it. <laughs> Listen, Chris's reaction to a balloon popping uh, is, does not get old. It's not gonna get old anytime soon for me. Pretty much anything can be eroticized. Some people have a sexual interest in enemas. Some people what? have a sexual interest in squishing bugs. Okay. Some people are aroused by having a pie thrown in their face. The best part of the whole thing is necking the balloon. Necking is where you blow the balloon up probably to around 14 to 15 inches and pretty much just pull the neck back and it pretty much inflates it stretches it out you know traditionally we just like to fluff it up to about 14 to 15 inches and then you just got to give it a good necking now you're gonna want to neck for about four to five second intervals take a break neck for three take a break and then let air in clearly i need to work on my technique Most experts believe that a fetish is rooted in a childhood experience where an object became linked to sexual pleasure or arousal. Hmm, you don't say. As a child, 
I was very, very petrified of balloons. I can remember going to the fair or being at parties, and I was so scared to the point that I would start crying. It was like probably from the age to like eight to 12. I realized that I felt this empowerment if I could get it as big as I could without it popping. See, this is a perfect example of not letting fear dictate your life. You grow up petrified of balloons, so you say, no, 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 fear, take a back seat, punch fear in the face, you start blowing up all the balloons you can find to the point where you can get them as large as you possibly can without popping them. And then bada bang, bada boom, a couple years go by, and you can't even have a good fap without popping a balloon. <laughs> See, the balloon play is just a gateway drug for the holy grail of the actual balloon pop, you know? I mean, is there anything more symbolic than what it means to actually just, you know what I mean? Like, just think about it. You're at that age, you're all confused in middle school, you're in homeroom, and all of a sudden Sally Jensen, who's a grade older than you, leans over to ask you a question and puts her hand on your knee, and the next thing you know, your balloon pops, and now confusion sets in. I remember just coming home and blowing up the balloon and pleasuring myself. Um, when I finally popped the balloon is when I finally found that I was the most attracted to the balloon itself. Now, I know you're probably sitting at home and you're watching that and you're thinking, Chris, that's a little bit much, don't you think? But I'm here to tell you, listen, as the mediator, there are a lot of parallels to be had between these balloons and arousal, right? And if you're still a naysayer, if you don't trust me, just do me a favor. Let's try this out. I want you to take a deep breath. Hold it in. Relax as best you can. Hold it in. And make a nice, just exhale nice and slow. That's what I thought. Now clean yourself up, you dirty sl Balloons activate all facets of our senses. So they're pretty to look at, they're colorful, they're cheerful, they have interesting shapes and sizes. They resemble breasts and penises. I mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a place I would love to be in for the rest of my life. I, I think it's calming and very enjoyable. There's really nothing inherently dangerous or deviant about this fetish. That is correct, but boy, is it strange. If I were to go on a first date, I wouldn't feel really comfortable coming out and talking about it until I got to know the person. And I guess I would just be afraid that that person would walk away from me and be like, oh my God. Because people are so quick to judge though, that's just it. Chris is correct, people are quick to judge and it is kind of heartbreaking because he seems like an incredibly nice guy outside of this particular obsession he has with balloons. And he's also right that if he brought this up on a first date with a woman, she would probably chug up those deuces real quick and delete, delete, delete Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, right? Like, uh, but you gotta, f I feel bad for the dude, you know? You have to, you have to have some sympathy for him. I think if he, if he could choose, he'd probably would do away with this particular, this particular obsession if he could. But now that it's part of him and he's like a grown ass adult, it probably makes his life just 10x more difficult. So that's why we're here, you know, trying to walk a day in his shoes, having a couple laughs, but at the same time, understanding. Uh, what this man is going through. This fetish is so important in my life and makes me so happy than with a, a female. I really believe that would be a make or break type of deal. So it's balloons or bust for Chris as far as his future misses is concerned. And if this was 25 years ago, he would be fucked, right? Just totally screwed single for the rest of your life. But guess what? Silver lining, it's 2019. We live in the internet era. My man Chris can hop on the nearest forum, find a community online. He's going to have broads with balloons lining up down the sidewalk. Just because I think it's weird doesn't mean there's not 100,000 people at Lunar.com that wouldn't love to link up with Chris and smash their genitals into a 24-inch latex balloon. God bless. If I had a female partner, I would really like to see them ride a balloon. I like watching them inflate balloons until they pop. I like to have them be naked in a pile of balloons, just playing with them and just enjoying themselves. Well, Chris, allow me to uh, direct your attention to this little ditty right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's hot. Call me. 
A few years ago, Chris began searching for people to share his fetish with. He has since discovered an enormous online community of fellow balloon fetishists known as Lunars. What did I tell you? 2019. In the United States alone, it's estimated that there are between 250,000 and 500,000 self-identified lunar fetishes. What? I think I'm going to try to finish this off and see if I can blow the top it. If you type balloon fetish into a search engine, you'll get over 6 million entries. I really believe that if I didn't have the Lunar community and all the support they've given me, I don't believe I would be here today. Well, Chris, I'm genuinely glad you found the community and have the support that you need. I think everybody deserves at least that. Uh, but let's see what the YouTube comments have to say. Did I just spend my data on this? Yeah, and that's called data well spent, Diana. <laughs> this guy wouldn't watch Pern. He'd watch Pixar's Up. Uh, 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 he'd die of an orgasm if he saw a zeppelin <laughs> so basically we we're <laughs> so basically we we're <laughs> <laughs> these these are golden these are golden so <laughs> get it together leon get it together you're almost done you're almost done leon so basically we're watching him come in his pants <laughs> wait are we yeah, I guess we are. <laughs> oh. Listen, thank you so much for joining Chris and I for a little bit of culture training here today. I think I learned a lot, and I hope you did too. I always love seeing the comments, guys, so thank you so much for all the support. Remember, if you want any merchandise or you want to become a channel member to help support the channel, you can do so using the links in the description below. And before we go, Nigel, you've been a little bit quiet this video. Is there anything you want to say before we go? I think you're both handsome and talented. Wow. Was that a compliment? <laughs> That is a welcome change of pace around here, my friend. And last but not least, grab yourself a 24-inch balloon. Only blow it up to about the 14-inch mark. Then just start singing the song We Will Rock You by Queen, but use the screech of the escaping air to replace just a few of the lyrics as you go. Buddy, you're a boy, make a big noise, playing in the street, gonna be a big... <laughs> you got mud on your... <laughs> big dis... <laughs> kicking your cat all over the place, singing We Will We... <laughs> rock... <laughs> Singing, <laughs> we will. <laughs> then you just let all the air out. You stand up out of your chair and you hip thrust that motherfucking like button for me. Thank you so much. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Hey guys, before you go, I just want to take a second to thank my friend Nick Ivey who made this custom Tomato Mafia canvas artwork for me uh, and hand delivered it yesterday. I met up with him, uh, he passed it off, he recorded the process uh, for his YouTube channel. Uh, so if you want, I'd love to get him to like a thousand subs. If you want to just head it over to his channel, check out the video he made about him making the canvas and handing it off to me. Um, that'd be great. Thank you, Kevin. Love the piece. It's going to be going up in the office as soon as I can clean up this shit show in here. All right, guys, appreciate you. Peace.